Hello, my sweet friends. How are you all doing? I'm August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads, and today I am embarking on my first ever readathon, and I am so stoked. This is my first time doing any sort of like reading challenge, readathon, anything, even solo or with a buddy. And this time I have a buddy, my new friend Ori. I will link his channel down below. You have to check it out. Such an amazing underrated booktuber reached out to me asking if I'd be interested in doing a kind of reading challenge over the course of this week. So it's currently Monday and this challenge will be going until next Monday. And we decided to create a book bingo. I'll insert a little photo of what this is actually supposed to look like. Thank you so much to Ori for actually designing this. Um, my printer decided to inverse the colors, which is very interesting. <laughs> Basically, our goal for this readathon bingo thing is to set ourselves up for success. I <laughs> Unfortunately, I have a very, very busy schedule this week. I was hoping I wouldn't, but it's going to be a lot of traveling, a lot of work. So I'm so happy that we decided to do this book bingo in a way that it sets us up for winning. <laughs> Depending on whatever we pick up and read, however many prompts that book fulfills, like cross it off. So I absolutely love this challenge. It was so fun to collaborate. Oh. Winston's here. Hello. It was so much fun to come up with these prompts and Ori had some wonderful ideas as well. So we are gonna be embarking on our first ever readathon. Let me read out the prompts to you all. We have name in the title, thrifted book, secondhand book, one of the oldest books on my TBR, three or more colors on the cover, does not include black and white, highest rated book on Goodreads, work that has been adapted into film slash TV, under 100 pages, BIPOC author, graphic novel slash illustrated book, lowest rated book on Goodreads, translated work, nonfiction, free space in the middle, continue a series or start a series, author from the country you live in, read a classic, object in the title, a book you bought within the last two months, thriller, reread a book, a book set in the summer, poetry book, second chance to a book you DNF'd, a book someone recommended to you or a trendy popular book currently, and first book you see on social media. These are so fun and I'm so excited. Let's talk about kind of my thoughts of what I want to get into. So right now I am really behind on my Goodreads challenge. So I want to read a lot of shorties. I want to definitely spend way more time reading, less time on social media. I need to prioritize reading and I want to read as many books as I can while still having to live a normal life for myself, which this week especially has been it's already very busy. It is now almost 8 p.m. on Monday, the first day. I have not read a thing because I've been running around town all day doing work and all of the things that life brings us. So I am trying to be realistic with myself and knowing that I am only human and I can only take on what I can take on. And I've honestly just kind of had a bad brain day today. Let's be real. I've had a very bad brain day. I think my car is having some issues and that was like an unexpected surprise and I was already stressed out. So I've just been like not feeling super great today. So I knew I actually just wrapped up a almost four hour photo session. I have another almost four, like five hour photo session tomorrow. So it's a lot of work. <laughs> my evenings are completely full almost for this entire week. So I really need to treat myself and be nice to myself. So I thought the first book that we'd start with to kick off this book bingo readathon, Tea Dragon Festival. <laughs> my heart needs this. My body needs this. My soul needs this. I, it's like a hug, okay? I've only read the first uh, Tea Dragon Society book. This is the second in the series. So I know based on the prompts we have can probably cross off a number of things on the book bingo just with this one. And my partner graciously gifted me the whole trilogy and this beautiful hardcover for my birthday this year and I have not read any of them. See, I feel like I want like a game plan with this. Ori and I did decide as well that audiobooks do count. So I'm just going to do my absolute best to use my time wisely this week, ditch social media as much as I can, just try to read as much as possible. But yeah, first thing I'm gonna pop into is Tea Dragon Festival. I'm so excited, like look at these colors and illustrations. So this is exactly what my heart needs. I'm going to read and dive into this right now. 
This honestly should not take me long at all and then we can decide what we want to read for the rest of the night and then going into tomorrow. Thank you all so incredibly much for being here. This is going to be a really fun week. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy my first ever readathon book bingo challenge video. And thank you so much to Ori for putting this together and reaching out to me and asking me to collaborate. This is my first collaboration video with another booktuber and it's been so much fun so far. We shall see what the rest of the week brings us. So I will be periodically checking in when I start a new book, finish it, cross it off the bingo. I'm pretty sure you all know how challenges work. <laughs> so. I don't feel like I need to explain it, but this is my first one. I'm just geeked, okay? All right, let's get cozy and enjoy something that's lighthearted and delicious and fun. All right, let's go. free space lovely continue a series or start a series whoop. and whoop. then we have graphic novel slash illustrated book through more colors on the cover oh yeah this is like the most colorful cover ever <gasps> Ooh, okay all right could get a straight down bingo with a thriller and then a book someone recommended to you or a trendy popular book currently object in the title does t count uh, it's, um, i don't think so okay friends i finished reading the tea dragon festival and it was so sweet and so cute and so heartwarming it's exactly what i needed to just like kick off this readathon I am just so enamored with this whole series. It's so cozy and comforting. Nothing super wild happens. The characters are absolutely amazing. This follows like a community that's hidden in the mountains. There's a lot of conversations between characters through American Sign Language, ASL, which is so rad. There are gay couples, non-binary folk, there are dragons and tea and coziness and foraging for herbs in this magical forest. It's just so wholesome. So absolutely love this. I don't think I even rated the first book. I mean, it was like five stars to me. This is like five stars. It's just so sweet and memorable and cozy and so beautifully illustrated. Like just a hug. This is like a warm cup of tea, it feels like. So I need to figure out what I'm going to read next. I honestly have no idea, so let's figure it out together. Okay, so my thoughts on other shorties to read. We have Emily Dickinson Selected Poems. For uh, translated work, I have a number of translated books, but I have not continued the series since getting all of them in paperback. And this is Girl from the Other Side, which is translated as well by Adrienne Beck. So this could count as my translated one. I just really want to finish this series, but I want to take my time with it too. So those two are definitely something I'm feeling. For the prompt, nonfiction and a book recommended to me actually is Money Honey. Uh, this cover is... <laughs> But my bank teller actually recommended it to me. She said that she had read it in like a day because it was so interesting. And my partner and I are currently working on budgeting, saving up for a wedding, saving up for a house. Like we got to make adult moves and this would actually be very practical. So those are kind of like what I'm feeling next. I feel like they'd all three would be pretty quick. Now let's look at some of the other prompts on my shelves real quick. Fast. So a prompt being thrifted secondhand, majority of these are thrifted or secondhand, which helps me out a lot. So I definitely want to look for some short books. My first thought actually is to read The Glass Menagerie by Tennessee Williams. It's a play. Plays I feel like are really quick to read 
and I haven't read Tennessee Williams since high school, so this is definitely an option as well. Thrifted, one of my favorite covers of the year. Okay, so other prompts to think about. Uh, we need a thriller. I have a few thrillers actually now. Classic, which might be best on audiobook, honestly. You know, <laughs> I do have some classics. Peter Pan, Picture of Dorian Gray, Thriller. So I do have um, the Van Apple Girls Are Gone. That could be a fun thriller. Like a Sister, which Book of the Month sent me a while ago, which is a BIPOC author and a thriller. Oh yeah, oldest book on my TBR. I honestly don't know 100% what's the oldest book. I really believe the oldest book on my TBR is Mother Lunch by Kirsten Scott. I got this over a year ago now. I think everything else on here, I've just been accumulating books very uh, frequently. So I think this might be the oldest and it might take place during summer just based on the cover, but it's a little bit thicker and I feel like I wanna leave a thicker book for like a thriller. Oof, we have a lot to think about here and I'm not sure where we want to start. I should have thought about all this earlier, but I didn't. Oh! Okay, friends, so change of plans. I'm actually going to reread the second book in the Girl from the Other Side series because I don't remember. I haven't read this since like last year or, well, it had to be because I got this whole set for Christmas. I am actually going to reread this. It'll be my first time reading it in this format. Oh my gosh, we have color. Oh! I do remember scenes of this, but I don't remember how it ended. So I'm going to reread this. friends. It is now Tuesday. I am on a break from my photo session and it's official. My car has a problem so I had to text my mechanic and that's a huge bummer. That actually throws really big wrenches into my plans for this week. I had to do a lot of traveling but now I can't because I don't feel comfortable driving my car. There's definitely an issue. I guess on the plus side, let's look at the silver lining for a second. That means I get to stay home and read for the rest of the week until my mechanic lets me know when I can take my car in and hopefully hopefully it won't be a big issue and hopefully it won't take long to be repaired but at least for this week I'm going to probably have to be homebound. Can't really be driving around a whole lot of places. Updates on the readathon though. Let's chat. So I finished Girl from the Other Side Volume 2 this morning. It was amazing and I'm really really glad I reread it um, before going into the third book because I did not remember anything that happened. You know obviously I remembered the characters were following Shiva which is a little girl and her teacher. It's an amazing manga series. I love it so much uh, by Nagabe or N Najabi. It's just phenomenal. It's so good and quaint and cozy and beautiful but yeah some things happened and I totally forgot that that book ends on such a cliffhanger and then I waited so long to read the third one so I'm really excited to read the third one. I might read it maybe after this readathon because upon finishing it I realized that I actually crossed off a lot more prompts and I think I missed a prompt as well. That is that. Um, finished it this morning. Absolutely loved it. And then I decided to jump into Money Honey by Rachel Richards. This cover is just not it's not for me, but I have been annotating the crap out of this book. Oh 
my gosh. I've been taking a lot of notes too because I got this really cute silly little notebook that says I believe in me and it's a unicorn. So the unicorn like believes in itself. I'm taking financial notes in this notebook. I'm learning so much and this book feels really empowering to me right now. I don't think this is for everyone. Downside of this book is it definitely takes, it takes student loans and being in debt and not making a lot of money into consideration, but it doesn't really talk about inherent differences in terms of women making less money. It doesn't talk, even though this is a female author, about women of color making less money, about the disparity in pay. So it's just kind of the way things are kind of blanket statement in here are just a little off-putting because I don't think anyone can relate to this. Like being able to set and have a budget I feel like is a luxury and this book is being like if you don't have a budget then you're doing life wrong and it's all your fault and I don't believe in that at all. I think if you are not having enough income and you're doing your absolute best to scrape by that's what you have and that's what you can do. But for me personally where I'm at in life I really needed this, especially in the U.S. There is no education during school or anything about how to do taxes, how to set a budget, how to just manage money in any way. So I have just gone in completely blind and now I'm a business owner and I still have no idea what I'm doing in terms of finances. Like I keep track of everything. I have an accountant, but for my own personal stuff, like paying myself or designating a budget for going out to eat for groceries for car, like having money saved for this car emergency specifically feels very on the nose and very appropriate right now. The uh, secondary title of this does say a simple seven step guide for getting your financial shit together. And yeah, my bank teller recommended this to me. I'm really enjoying it. I'm flying through it, but I'm also taking so many notes. So I'm not flying through it super, super fast. I'm now on page 32, but I'm just taking a lot of notes, really feeling inspired to get my financial shit together genuinely and that's something I've needed for a long time and it actually is written by like millennial woman so it feels at least a little bit more relatable in terms of like we weren't really set up for a whole lot of success in terms of finances and inflation. This has been really eye-opening for me personally. It's really working for me right now and I'm really excited to dive into budgeting and stuff and hopefully giving you all my thoughts later. There are a few chapters in here I know are not going to be relevant for me which is like student debt I thankfully don't have any student loans or student debt because I went to school in Canada and it was much cheaper and I paid for it out of pocket. So thankfully don't have to worry about that one, but there's just a lot to learn, such as investing and all that stuff. So I am a good chunk of the way in. Hoping to finish this tomorrow, especially because my plans have been completely canceled for tomorrow. I also started an audiobook. Every time I wanted to read this book, there's been like you have to place a hold on it, even on Libby. But I'm finally listening to my sister, The Serial Killer. I can't remember the author's name. This title and this cover art is so all over the place. I've heard nothing but wonderful things. And I'm now 10% of the way through the audiobook. I started it today and I'm loving it. Audiobook narrator is phenomenal. So good. It's so engaging and I feel really attached to the story already and wanting to know more. Writing is fantastic. The plot, the story is so great. The characters I'm already really loving. So very high hopes for this audiobook. So far this readathon, we're only on day two, is going so well. Like the books I'm reading, I'm really loving. Going through it pretty quickly. Granted, there were two graphic novels, but those are still books. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to finishing My Sister the Serial Killer, seeing where that goes, because it is like a thriller, literally about a woman whose sister is a serial killer and she keeps having to like clean up after her sister. Yeah, and her sister keeps killing her boyfriends. Like she'll start dating a guy and then just like kill him. And the main character, our narrator, is the one who has to like clean up the mess. So really enjoying that. But yeah, unfortunately, I have to take my car into the shop. I have over an hour left of this shoot. All right, friends, I will check in with you all tomorrow when I finish another book. Hopefully tomorrow then. I guess I'll just check in whenever I finish another book.
Look at the food truck. Yes. We gotta pull it out again for the vlog. Danger. For the vlog. <laughs> Look at these on. Yeah, we see these were jawbreakers. What are these called? Jawbreakers. Look at all the colors. What are these? It's a nice sound. Baby face tears. <laughs> Marsh, they're like hard marshmallow. Thursday evening, it is around 
9, 10 o'clock at night. It's been a really, really lovely day, my friends, and I have so much to catch you up on. So yesterday, Wednesday, I did finish reading Money Honey by Rachel Richards. There's Winnie. Hi. And then I put the tools that I learned in this book to use and actually budgeted everything. And then my partner and I budgeted what we want to plan for like future vacations, our wedding, like all of those fun things. And I found it really, really insightful. And it does say at the very beginning of this book to skip chapters that are not relevant to you. So I did. I skipped chapters that were not relevant, but I'm still counting it as I finished the book. I've been home for a little bit. And it's like he's just now noticing my presence. There were still a few chapters that I didn't particularly resonate with. Taxes, insurance, uh, mutual funds, investing. Like I, I didn't do as much annotating because those are things that I'm not super interested in or need knowledge of right now but just to have an idea and to gain a little bit more insight. Student loans and debt and that kind of stuff, I feel really, really grateful that I don't have to deal with that issue just because I was personally paying for school as I went, which is also why I didn't graduate because I couldn't afford school. So I do feel really grateful that a lot of this did not have to even pertain to me, but I did read it. I gained a lot of very valuable information of how I'm going to move forward. And there are free resources in here as well. She has like a whole free, discount link code thing to get spreadsheets to start budgeting and planning for future stuff and basically investing in yourself. Life-changing friends. This is honestly life-changing for me because I did not grow up with any assistance in terms of knowing how to budget, knowing anything about finances, knowing even where to begin. Really learned a lot and uh, unfortunately there was not a whole lot in here about being a business owner because it's a lot about like saving money through your nine to five corporate kind of business job or you know if your company provides insurance if your company provides retirement plans and i'm like i've never <laughs> been able to experience that so i gained a lot there were a lot of things that were not pertinent to me but overall at least like the first you know big chunk chapter like until like here life-changing life-changing about how to like disperse your income so that way you're saving for the future things you want whether it's like in the next year and then doing long-term things like for me it would be like buying a house in the next like five ten years and then you know even further retirement like how do you divvy up all those funds and still be on like a budget. I learned so much and this book has helped me more than any other book. And I've read so many like financial self-help books. All of it felt like gobbledygook to me. I'm like, I still don't fully understand how this is actually gonna help. This really did help. So I greatly thank my bank teller. Finished this yesterday. Hello. And then yesterday too, my partner and I met up with a friend and we had drinks and we watched stand up comedy and had dinner and it was so much fun. But then after finishing Money Honey and last night, I did decide to pick up my next book, which you probably saw, which is The Van Apple Girls Are Gone by Felicity McLean to fulfill several other prompts I have left, such as a book that I bought within the last two months a book I've thrifted, as well as a book that takes place during the summer. So I could cross off three prompts with this one. I am loving this book, my friends. As soon as I started it, I was hooked. I love this writing style so much. It's that writing style that's easy to read. It's very accessible and I'm flying through it because there is a lot of dialogue and a lot of intrigue, like so much intrigue. I just like want to keep reading it. But if you slow down reading and actually enjoy each sentence, it is so wonderfully structured and it's so beautiful. Now I am on page 58, so I'm a good chunk of the way through. I'm really hoping to finish this, hopefully tomorrow or something since again all my plans have been canceled i'm stuck at home i don't think my mechanic can even get to my car this week so i was hoping he could get to it tomorrow but unfortunately i don't foresee that happening um so i'm gonna be without a car until like next week which is such a bummer so this follows our main character tika and it takes place in australia and it opens up with her as an adult living in dude's going crazy 
And I think the book takes place, it's somewhere on the East Coast and in, in the US. So it's like Philadelphia or Boston or something like that. And she's grown and she thinks she sees one of the Van Apple girls on the street grown up. And she chases her through the subway, realizing it's not the person she thought it was. And then we bounce back to 1980s in Australia where she grew up, Tika grew up. And we're getting to know Tika and her sister and then the Van Apple girls. There are three. There's Cordelia, Ruth, and I want to say like Helen or something like that. They lived across the street from each other and then one day all three of the Van Apple girls just disappear. And there is some really beautiful eerie writing in here that I was just like shocked talking about how these girls just up and vanished and no one knew like what happened how was it possible that three girls are just like completely gone but it's also talking about like the super hot summer days wonderful languid like childhood summer days together like swimming in a pool eating popsicles but the Van Apple girls were also raised by a very, very Christian, devout faith, like God-fearing parents and like a lot about like the Bible and stuff, but there was also physical abuse in the home. There's like this really uncomfortable passage that's talking about all the clothing items Hannah, oh, it's Hannah, not Helen, Hannah, Cordelia, and Ruth had been wearing. They wore 21 items of clothing between them. And then it goes and lists everything they wore, almost like a police report. And it says between the three of them, they had six femurs, 99 vertebrae, three skulls, and 30 fingernails, six kneecaps, 48 carpal bones, and more than 3 million strands of blonde hair, all tinged alien green by the chlorine in their pool, which up until the day they went missing, we'd swum in almost every single day that summer. And yet all these things vanished, just evaporated in the heat. Not a single sign was left for us. And it's just so unsettling, but the writing style, it's, it's like that. It's like you can, you can fly through it, but also it's just so uncomfortable and eerie and deep and moving and beautifully written. This is like a huge five-star prediction for me. I know I'm only like 60 pages through, but I'm loving it. And when I pick it up, I don't want to put it down. I just want to keep reading. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready for bed. Today has just been so much fun. Read this in the morning. My dad and I went to this wonderful indoor market that I've showcased on vlog before we talked about books and stuff and I'm trying to convince my dad because he's currently reading a book that he's loving and he told me all about it in so much detail and I was like you need to just like be on this channel at least once so I think I'm gonna try and rope him into like a July wrap-up or something with me and he can talk more in depth about the book that he's reading so if you want to see that happen you want my dad to come on the channel and talk about books please show your love down below okay he also reads every comment you guys leave so if you just want to like put some love down there and say you want to hear about his favorite books like that would be so cool we can get him on here and we can all just like have a conversation about the books we're reading he reads different genres than I do but I think that's what's fun is like we can get this like whole collective interesting perspective on all these different books and it would be so fun so yeah we just had like a really lovely evening together there was a live dj outside playing this like really cool like almost like tropical jazz music and it was just such an amazing day. I am also almost halfway through My Sister the Serial Killer. I feel like that one is only going to cross off Thriller, but if that's the case, then I would get a second bingo because my last one, I did get a bingo. So this could be like my second bingo when I finish it, but so far My Sister the Serial Killer is phenomenal. And I don't know if it's technically classified as a thriller, but I'm tense. Like things are, ha I, it has to be a thriller, but it feels almost like a literary fiction. These characters are so interesting and fascinating and well-rounded. I'm just really, really in awe of this book. Like I totally understand the hype of it now. You know, some books I'm like, okay, they're popular for a reason. Let's just go in with like an open mind. And I end up being really, really disappointed. But this one, I'm understanding the hype, you guys. Like this book is phenomenal. It's so good. And then I think tomorrow night, I'm gonna be going over to my sister's apartment because her and her partner are moving soon just for like one last night of like hoorah and I think we're gonna do like a little movie night maybe make some dinner together so yeah just living life at the same time as reading my other goal is to read uh selected poems by Emily Dickinson which is gonna classify as poetry classic because it's Emily Dickinson as well as um a book under 100 pages a work that has been adapted into film slash tv there's a show called Dickinson is it is that what it's called 
it's a great show. I never finished it, but like I started watching the first few episodes, fell in love about Emily Dickinson's life, but like through like a modern retelling where she's friends with death and it's so good. Um, so that would actually count for this one too. Oh, one other thing I wanted to say, this is such a long chat, but Van Apple Girls Are Gone. I'm going to also count this, okay, as lowest rated book on Goodreads because I actually went on Goodreads, looked at my lowest rated books that I want to read that is just on my want to read. I, d I don't have every book on my physical TBR in my want to read list. Like I just started making that want to read list of like books that I'm interested in, I see, but I forget about. How do I phrase this? When going on like my lowest rated on Goodreads in my want to read category, this is the sixth book. So it is pretty lowly rated in terms of all the books I want to read, but it's the, the first one that I physically own. All the other books are books that I do not own. So this is technically my lowest rated on Goodreads. Yeah, and it says lowest rated book on Goodreads that I own, that is in my want to read list. So I'm also gonna cross that one off as a prompt. So we're just playing this game very savvy by crossing off all the prompts that apply. But I think this one should apply because it truly is the lowest one I have on my want to read list that I physically own. So hopefully that counts. Okay, I will stop rambling and I'll check in with you all a little bit later. Howdy friends. It is a super hot morning. I think it's maybe around 11 a.m. I'm at the park and I just finished reading Emily Dickinson's Selected Poems. This is the Dover Thrift Edition and it was my first time reading Emily Dickinson, surprisingly. Yeah. I wasn't wowed. I was not wowed. For how ubiquitous her name is and how well known she is as a poet, I I didn't really personally feel a whole lot from this, unfortunately. There were like a few, a few little stanzas that really stuck out to me and I like took photos of them because I, I'm just so much more into super vague poetry with a lot of like sensory descriptions, but I have no idea what the hell is going on. I like that. This one felt almost like I could imagine what was happening or imagine the actions or the atmosphere really, really well. Um, so it was good in that sense. Like it painted a really good picture of the atmosphere and ambience and environment, but it didn't really leave me questioning or thinking more. And that's what I like in literature. I like not having everything handed to me and I like a little bit more surrealism but I wanted to read one that I really liked the second half of the poem in the garden let me see if I can find it I know a place where summer strives with such a practiced frost she each year leads her daisies back recording brief lost but when the south wind stirs the pools and struggles in the lanes her heart misgives her for her vow and she pours soft refrains into the lap of adamant and spices and the dew that stiffens quietly to quartz upon her amber shoe. I loved that because it's personifying summer as a season, as a woman. She's leading her daisies back, like, come on, come on home, daisies. And when the south wind stirs, her heart misgives her for her vow. Then the spices, the dew, the colder weather, the frost all starts coming in. 
and she stiffens quietly to quartz. It's a little cold upon her amber shoe. And amber is the most like autumnal color you can really think of. So I loved that. That was the shit. That was that was gorgeousness. Uh, everything else, other than like a few random ones, I really did like. Finally got to read the poem in total, uh, the chariot, which I love. It's in the show Dickinson, and um, I really love how they personify death. But it just says, because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. Um, so I really like that. All the talk about like death personified or seasons personified, that's my jam. I love it. Yeah, so I'm actually getting attacked by ants this whole time I was sitting here. Ants are all over me and I'm really hungry. Uh, so I'm gonna walk home. I only have an hour or so left of My Sister the Serial Killer. So I listened to that on my walk here. I'm gonna listen to it on the way back. So I'm getting really close to finishing that one. And then the remainder of today will be the Van Ample Girls Are Gone. Good progress. And when I get home, I'll cross off my bingo for this one. So yeah, the whatever squares work for this one. So since I finished this one before the Van Apple Girls, this one counts as a book I thrifted because I did thrift this edition as well. Um, book under 100 pages, a classic, and poetry. Just got crossed off four. We just crossed four off. Amazing. So, okay. I will walk home and check in with you all in a little bit, my friends. Good morning friends hi <laughs> it has been a while since i've updated you and i wanted to talk because today is now tuesday the readathon book bingo challenge is over so i need to update you all on what i finished reading where my little bingo chart marks stand this challenge was amazing i had so much fun with this challenge i felt like i was just like getting through books in a pace that was normal for me last year but has not been normal for me this year. Wanting to read 
staying off of social media more, picking up books more, even if it's just a few pages at a time. I think where I'm at now in this year has been a lot of like, I only want to read if I can like dedicate a huge chunk of time to reading. And that's just not feasible sometimes, especially when life gets busy. You know, that's how you can make progress in a book is just like a few pages at a time. You don't need to dedicate two whole hours to just reading. So I loved getting back into that pace and that rhythm of just like reading for fun, picking up a book just for a few pages at a time. It's okay if you don't have three hours in a day to just like dedicate only to reading. That's not realistic sometimes. I absolutely love this challenge. I'm so glad Ori reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in participating because it was so fun and it really got me like back on track with like reading. Reading so many different books, a huge wide variety and just having so much fun with it. I honestly don't remember the last time I updated you all. And so since then I have finished two other books. I finished reading My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyenken Braithwaite and I really enjoyed this book. This was the audiobook my friends. If you can take away anything from this video uh, please just listen to the audiobook. The audiobook narrator is fantastic. I was so engaged with this whole experience. I was really just, oh, the voices, the characters, the soothing cadence, the character accents. Because I do believe this takes place in Nigeria, and I, I think it's Nigeria, and I just, oh, it was good. I was like on the edge of my seat. I really wanted to know where things happened. But again, it did that thing that I just struggle with giving thrillers high ratings because there's all this buildup. And we're learning so much about these characters and their motives and their backstory. And this book in particular, it did such slow bounce back chapters to um, our main character and her sister's past. And I, I think that's a hard thing too with audiobooks is I can't retain names and information as well. But if I heard it, I'd recognize the names. Oh no, ah, oh, see with like a visual, I'm more of a visual learner. So I can't remember, I can't even picture like the spelling of their names. Um, so I apologize, but yeah, it's a sister and then our main narrator, they're both sisters, obviously. Every few chapters it would bounce to their past, growing up with a very abusive father. This book has a lot of content warnings. So just be cautious going into that. There was a, like a domestic abuse household. Um, so it would do like a few bounces to that. But for the most part, I was just feeling so engaged with like what was currently happening. Our protagonist, our narrator, talking about how she has to like consistently save her younger sister because her younger sister keeps killing her boyfriends. And um, I think there was just a lot of really, really good commentary in there that I personally can relate to. And I don't know how much I want to share about that of the personal relation, but um, I am an oldest sister. I am the eldest child. And there were just a lot of uh, dynamics. You know, if you're a sister and you have a younger sister, there are just a lot of dynamics that I feel ring true. Um, having to be the more responsible one, the more mature one, kind of acting like a second mother. This book just kind of went about and explored that topic really, really well, like to the extreme where this character has to take care of her sister and basically lie and cover up these murders and like protect her sister. It's very much a protector role and feeling responsible and um, taking a lot on that is sometimes not really talked about in society, like how much you take on as an older sibling. And uh, I just thought that was really interesting. It also talks a lot about pretty privilege. <laughs> Our main character's younger sister is gorgeous and has a lot of pretty privilege. And I think that's something that society needs to dive into a little bit more as well. Um, if you are more societally beautiful and gorgeous, how many more opportunities are opened up to you and how you can get away with a lot more. So just very interesting topics, but it did that thing, circling back, I'm a rambler, I know. It did that thing in thrillers that like, I think this is just a me problem. It's the same with horror movies, scary movies, anything like that. Like the buildup was way more enjoyable for me than the resolution. You know, when things were wrapping up at the end of this book, I just didn't feel anything. I was just like, okay, like, did it make things make sense? Absolutely. It tied things together really well. It didn't really end on like a cliffhanger. It, it was pretty much wrapped up. It felt like it felt pretty whole. And I wonder if the ending would have been a different experience for me to visually read it rather than listening to it. But yeah, once it, once things were explained a little bit more or described a little bit more, I just, I lost the, the vibe of it. And that's just a 
me issue so overall this book is like a three four star but up until the ending like I was I couldn't wait to listen to it and I couldn't wait to like dive back into the world and see what was gonna happen and the writing is phenomenal it's very strong storytelling and character development but also just gorgeous writing in general so it's easy and accessible to read very similar to the next book I finished, which was The Van Apple Girls Are Gone by Felicity McLean. Very similar writing style where it's super easily accessible to just dive in head first into this story and characters and the writing is still delicious. So much to do with like it's not outright atmosphere building but just the word selection is super intentional. So you get the feeling of the suspense, of the anxiety, of things building, of feeling out of control, a lot about sisterhood, family, dynamic relationships. So yeah both of those books have a lot to do with sisterhood and the Van Apple Girls Are Gone. I really enjoyed this book and I think the ending again didn't wow me endings are really important to me I want to linger I want to have that like savory last note in my mouth and this didn't fully bring that either but I can see why people would not like this book because it doesn't have great ratings on Goodreads because it's it sets itself up for being kind of like a thriller a mystery but if you're going into it for that intention I don't think you're gonna be fully satisfied. This is much more of like a literary fiction character development of two girls, they're both sisters, who witness the Van Ample girls going missing. What led up to that? What happened afterwards? And it's very much like the perspective of The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides, or even Sputnik Sweetheart by Haruki Murakami, where it's just like, you're not in the vicinity almost of the actual crime. You're not actually there. You are witnessing it from a like, complete outside sphere and bubble. And I really like that. We're very distant. We're just getting all of this young girl's life, um, Tika and her sister Laura, like their lives and how they were so strongly impacted by their friends going missing and vanishing into thin air and how much it affects a community, how it affects a family how it affects your brain, the way you think, and just a lot of reflection. Could I have done more? Should I have done more? And a lot of like just regret and guilt and shame. And I love that. I love that so much. I love being distanced in that way. And I love hyper-focusing on somebody who, while they know like the victims, they themselves don't have the experience of uh, that crime, but it is that that shock wave, the, the aftershock, you know? Um, so I really enjoyed this book. Really, really enjoyed it. I loved it. I thought it was just such a great summer ride because it still was easily accessible, but it did have a lot of commentary on these feelings and things that happened. So really enjoyed that one. Then last night I was like, can I squeeze in one more? It can, we'll just see. Let's just see. So I actually decided to go with the prompt that was first book you see on social media. So I opened up social media and I was scrolling until I saw a book and it was from Allison Pages and she had posted a picture of Miss Ice Sandwich by Miko Kawakami. And so I went on Libby to see if it was there and they had an ebook. So I picked it up on my Kindle and let's see how far I got. I think I got about like almost 70% of the way through because this book is under 100 pages. It's 90, yeah, 75% my friends. Ow, oh, that's so infuriating. <laughs> I couldn't get the last 25%. Come on. I was so freaking close. This book is only like 90 something pages. I absolutely adore it. So I'm so mad that I didn't get to include it on this bingo sheet. I will be finishing this today. It's just so wonderful. I'm not gonna like DNF it just because I didn't get to this bingo. I'm loving this book. It's following an unnamed, at least so far, protagonist who's I think in like the fourth grade. He is neurodivergent and we're not entirely sure a whole lot about his story um, other than his mom is a little bit absent. His father passed away when he was young. He's navigating the world and um, school and he's fascinated by this girl who works at a sandwich counter in the local like supermarket and he calls her Miss Ice Sandwich and he's constantly counting things. He's easily hyper fixated on certain things. You can tell he has a lot of difficulty navigating conversations, situations with people. He has a really hard time like 
like he feels like he should say more, he should do more, but he's hyper analyzing people's reactions and facial expressions, not knowing how to interact with them. And so then feels a lot of shame when he doesn't interact well. And I really enjoy being in this character's head. It feels emotional and sentimental and deep because you're getting this perspective that is so, you can tell he has a lot of anxiety about how he can't quite navigate the world and gets frustrated by that. But at the same time, it still feels lighthearted and fun because it is from this like, childhood perspective. So I'm so glad that was the first book I saw on social media and the fact that it was under 100 pages. I was really hoping I would get through it but sleep took me away. So those are the books that I read. I have loved every single book that I've read in this challenge and I've read so many books in just one week. I'm so proud of myself. It's been so much fun fun and like I want to keep this momentum going whether that's just like reading shorter books or you know reading a few pages at a time like I would love to do that so let me share my final bingo page for you all ba -ba -da -ba! oh my gosh <laughs> I was very strategic uh, with the books that I picked, so that way they would cross off at least, you know, two prompts at a time, bare minimum. So we ended up getting a bingo here, bingo here, bingo here, and a bingo here. We got, oh, and a bingo here. <laughs> we got five bingos. <laughs> So the one I was working towards was first book you see on social media, which would not have given me anything else, but I was just like, let's just see, this is a challenge. Let's see if I can get anything else. Unfortunately, that did not happen. So the only prompts that I missed were first book you see on social media, second chance to a book you DNF'd, highest rated book on Goodreads, one of the oldest books on my TBR, and name in the title. Everything else? Well, crossed up and I'm so happy about that. It was so fun and I love having prompts. You know, that's why I do my TBR jar challenge. Like I like having things kind of like picked out for me. It's a little bit of a challenge to find things that fit certain prompts, but also it just really narrows down my TBR and helps me pick because I am so indecisive. So there we have it, friends. Please be sure to go check out Ori's video. You'll have to go check out his channel to see how he did. And I highly encourage you do. I think you're gonna fall in love with the books that he reads, the wonderful content he comes out with, like just so fun and engaging. Really enjoy his content. And this was just so much fun. And I've made a new bookish friend and I love it. I love it so much. It makes my heart so happy. This was just so wonderful and I can't wait to do more challenges in the future. If any other booktubers want to do a little challenge or something, let me know because this was just so much fun. <laughs> I had such a good time. But with that being said, my friends, please be sure to go check out Ori's channel, watch videos, subscribe, like truly such a gem in this little like corner of the YouTube universe like booktube is just such a wonderful treasure trove of underrated and wonderful creators so yeah definitely support one another and just have fun and read good books and connect really hope you enjoyed this challenge thank you so much for being here uh if you made it to the end if you want to comment just a lot of like book emojis honestly like there are so many just we want all the books. We want all the books and community and love and everything like that. And I can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye!